Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we saw the definition of center of a group and we also proved that uh, center becomes a subgroup of G. Remember for any group G, we have defined the center to be collection of those elements in the group which commute with all other elements of the group. So the center is denoted by Zg and it contains those elements of the group which happen to commute with all other elements of the group. Uh, this concept is defined in general for any group. So G may or may not be abelian but in the last problem we proved that the center will always be an abelian group. In fact towards the end I also proved that the center will be equal to the whole group if and only if G is abelian. So for abelian groups the center is not very uh, not a very interesting concept because if your group is abelian then straight away you can use this result and uh, say that the center is going to be the whole group. So naturally it will make sense to find the center only for those groups which are non-abelian. So out here I have listed a non-abelian group namely the group of cotton ions and for this group let us see if we can find out the center. Would you all like to pause your video, try it out and then come back and check with me. So as a reference if you want you can use the composition table for the group of cotton ions. You will notice that 1 and minus 1 commute with all other elements. This is a non-abelian group. So one can expect the center to be, one should expect the center to be a proper subset of the group. So I'm sure that some elements are not going to lie inside the center. But uh, that's not the case with 1 and minus 1. 1 into any other element is, uh, that, uh, is that element and that element into 1 is the same. So 1 into any element is that element into 1. 1 commutes with every other element. You can also ensure that minus 1 commutes with every other element of the group. On the other hand, if you look at i, i into j is not the same as j into i. So there is at least one element with which i does not commute. So we cannot say that i, do, I commutes with all elements and therefore i does not lie in the center. For the same reason, j will not lie in the center. Now if you have not managed to uh, find out what was the center so far, you can again pause and check, use this technique and find out which elements will lie in the center. So one can show that these are the only two elements which will lie in the center of the group. Okay. And when we have more examples of non-abelian groups, especially finite ones, you can at that stage try and find out the center of that group. But that will be all for now about the center. Uh, let me give you another note before I move on to the next problem. For square matrices, I know that a matrix is invertible. I'm talking about square matrices. We know that a matrix is invertible if and only if it is non-singular. Non-singular means the determinant is not equal to zero. And uh, in this case, we also have a formula for the inverse. Inverse is 1 upon determinant A, which is another way of, I mean this is yet another notation for the determinant. 1 upon determinant A times a joint of A. A joint is nothing but the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So you can brush up a little bit of matrix algebra and find out what is the adjoint. But for the moment, the result that I am going to require is, suppose I have a 2 by 2 matrix. If I have a 2 by 2 matrix and I know that its determinant is not equal to 0, its determinant will be product of the diagonals minus product of the non-diagonal elements. 
So AD minus BC will not be equal to 0. So suppose I have a 2 by 2 matrix which is non-singular. That means determinant is not equal to 0. Then for this 2 by 2 matrix you can very easily write down the inverse. It is 1 upon determinant of A. Determinant of A is AD minus BC into adjoint of A. And for a 2 by 2 matrix it is very easy to find out the adjoint, you simply interchange the diagonal elements. So instead of AD along the diagonal, you write DA along the diagonal. This is just a trick which will help you solve the next problem quickly. So you interchange the diagonal elements and for the non-diagonal elements, you simply change the sign. So this would be a quick way to find out the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix provided it is non-singular. Let's look at the next problem now. So let's look at this problem. Here the group given is GL2R. We have come across this group in chapter 1. Uh, GL2R is the set of all 2 by 2 matrices with real entries. But not all 2 by 2 matrices. We take only non-singular 2 by 2 matrices. So our group contains 2 by 2 non-singular matrices with real entries and we know that this is a group with respect to matrix multiplication so even if the group operation is not satisfied it's understood uh, it's not specified it is understood that it is multiplication of matrices here and uh, so in this set g we have two by two matrices whose determinant is not zero so remember in G, I have those 2 by 2 matrices whose determinant is not equal to 0. Now I specifically take H to be set of all 2 by 2 matrices whose determinant is equal to 1. So in G, I had those 2 by 2 matrices whose determinant is non-zero. That is a group with respect to matrix multiplication. And H is the set of 2 by 2 matrices whose determinant is specifically equal to 1. We have to prove that this is a subgroup of G. So firstly, it is clear that H is a subset of G. Because here, I have taken those matrices whose determinant is 1. If determinant is 1, naturally it is not 0. So every element here is going to be in G. So if this part is clear. Now let us prove that the identity lies inside H. Remember what is the identity for matrix multiplication. We have the matrix I. 1, 0, 0, 1. Determinant of this matrix is product of the diagonals minus product of the non-diagonal entries which is equal to 1. So determinant of this matrix is specifically equal to 1 and therefore this element, the identity element lies inside H. Now this time, for the first time, let me try and use theorem 2, the second necessary and sufficient condition for a subset to become a subgroup. And remember there we have a combination of closure and inverse properties. So I will take two elements in this set because they are matrices I use capital letters. Let me take two elements inside this set and our aim will be to prove that the first element into inverse of the second lies inside H. So I begin with two arbitrary elements of H and finally somehow I need to arrive at the conclusion that A into B inverse lies inside H. So let's see how we are going to do that. Firstly, as I said, if they are elements of H, they are matrices. And they are 2 by 2 matrices for that matter. So A is going to look like A, B, C, D. Here A, B, C, D are all real numbers. And more importantly, because this is a matrix in H, its determinant has to be equal to 1. So more importantly, AD minus BC is equal to 1. Let's call this as equation 1. And similarly, B is also inside H. So B will be something like EFGH where 
E, F, G, H are real numbers and uh, determinant of this will be E, H minus F, G that will be equal to 1. Let's call this as equation 2. And this time as I said we are going for theorem 2. So we directly try to tackle what is A, B inverse. So let us first find out what is AB inverse. AB inverse is equal to ABCD into inverse of B. And remember that note which I gave you. We know how we know our trick for finding out the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix directly. B inverse will be 1 upon determinant of B times a joint of B. For a joint of B, you interchange the diagonal elements and for the non-diagonal elements, we simply change the sign, not the position. Now using equation 2, I know EH minus FG is 1. So I can forget about this term. I am left with A, B, C, D into H minus F minus G minus E. Now this is simple multiplication of two matrices. So I want you all to try this out on your own. So pause the video, uh, do your computations and then come back to the video. So we will get AH minus BG minus AF plus BE CH minus DG and minus CF plus DE. So this is my matrix AB inverse. And remember at the end I wish to prove that AB inverse lies inside H. So this is a 2 by 2 matrix. Entries over here are real numbers. So the only thing I need to verify is the determinant of this matrix. So let us find out what is the determinant of AB inverse. Determinant of this matrix is product of the diagonals, product of the diagonal entries minus product of the non-diagonal entries. Let me write the positive term first, B minus AF. Again, I encourage you all to pause the video, do your calculations and then come back to it. So if I open out the brackets I'll get and let me write them in the dictionary order minus A C F H plus A D E H plus B C F G minus B D E G. It's a product of real numbers which is commutative. So I have written it in the order that would be convenient to me. Then from here be careful the second bracket has a minus sign. So I'll have minus B C E H then plus A C F H plus B D E G and minus A D F G. Carefully check the calculations. So some of these terms are going to cancel out. Uh, let me see which one. Minus ACFH plus ACFH cancels. So out of the 8 terms, only 4 terms survive. So which are the 4 terms? Uh, let me put this term and this term together. EH is common. So I get AD minus BC and look at the two remaining terms this and this from this I prefer to take minus FG common you will see soon why it is better to take minus FG common if I take minus FG common let me write the positive term first AD and uh, this one will become minus BC so this becomes EH minus FG into AD minus BC so, use equations 1 and 2 now. Equation 1 says that AD minus BC is 1. 
equation 2 says that this is also equal to 1. So ultimately we have proved that determinant of AB inverse is equal to 1. And therefore this matrix AB inverse lies inside H. This is the necessary and sufficient condition that we stated in theorem 2. And this tells us that H is a subgroup of G. For those of you who are uh, fairly familiar with properties of the determinant, it will be easier, I mean the proof is easier if you simply use properties of determinants. So in that case, you don't have to actually write the elements of A and B. You can say because you can do the proof this way. This is if you wish to use the properties of the determinant directly, else this is perfectly alright. So if A and B belong to H, determinant of A is 1, determinant of B is 1, then look at determinant of AB inverse, use properties of the determinant, determinant of the product is product of the determinants and determinant of B inverse, of course if B inverse exists then determinant, then this will be 1 upon determinant of B and this will work out to be 1. So this will be a much shorter proof but for this you need to know your properties of the determinant. So this tells us that H will be a subgroup. In the next lecture we will see an interesting property about subgroups. Thank you.